right, very interesting case. Structure, structure effects function. So we saw a lot, but what we're going to talk about only is what the physical exam confirmed as being an issue. So here we can see the internal carotid on the left goes through its normal path. On the right, it pulls in, it tucks inside the uh, hyoid bone and the thyroid cartilage, and then it comes out and there's some sort of adhesion or something pulling the internal carotid way out this way, pushing it into the uh, jugular vein and right up against the atlas. As an atlas orthogonist, we care about knowing things like this and look how they're butt up against each other and being pressed into the atlas. And when we touch her, there's a little dysautonomy in there. When she brings her jaw back, when she retracts her jaw, it triggers it. When she juts her jaw forward, which will pull the hyoid out and, of course, release uh, this tissue a little bit. Big difference. Uh, there's a release in there. The nervous system likes it. And, of course, we're adjusting the atlas for all, all it's worth to the best of our ability. Uh, but we need to have uh, a dental appliance that will hold the jaw forward. So the dentist will help us there. We need, also need somebody to try to break up whatever adhesions or scar tissue is in there that's, that's pulling this hard to the side, causing a dysautonomia in there, uh, which actually her atlas goes out of place as soon as you touch that. And that's probably because of this right here. The internal carotid artery has a plexus of nerves around it <clears throat> that does not like to be touched or stretched or tractioned or compressed, whatever it is that's happening in there, they're being pulled sideways, pushed together, and approximating the transverse process. Uh, so anybody that's going to go after that, anybody that can help us would be just great. Any questions? Oh, the other component is uh, when you turn your head to the right, the atlas slides up to the, at to the left significantly, and you're able to go out of adjustment pretty quickly when you turn your head to the right uh, too much. When you turn your head to the left, the atlas kind of stays level, doesn't go too far, you hold the adjustment, doesn't seem to be a problem. So when it comes to knocking you out of adjustment, the fastest way to knock your head out of adjustment is to have you turn your head to the right as far as it'll go, and uh, just touch and compress this in here, that plexus, and that knocks you out of adjustment too. Any questions, anything I missed? Anybody? <laughs> well, so the airway the airway is not going to be happy either. So when you got the hyoid pulled back like this, here you can see how it's it's pulling the internal carotid towards the midline, and we already know. Uh, well, we'll show it to you. I guess the airway is showing to be uh, narrowed in there, and if I bring it this way, you can see. Uh, it gets real narrow in there. So again, we want an appliance to hold the jaw forward. Uh, I have a question. If the appliance pulls the jaw forward, will the airway expand? Yeah. Yes, it should. It has to. Yeah, it will. It has to. All of this will open up. Look at it. There you can see it going sideways there. There's the highway in there. See as it And look how far it pulls it to the side there. Uh, so there's hydrodissection. That's one of the things that the doctors will do, and they'll go in there and they'll break up uh, any scar tissue or release it. Uh, there are doctors that will release uh, jugular veins. Uh, we've seen that quite a bit, where they'll have adhesions and uh, posterior belly, the digastric, all kinds of funny things will happen compressing these. Uh, so, But in your case, it's two for the price of one, maybe a hydrodissection or a release in there surgically uh, so that thing is not doing that anymore. Uh, that can't be wrong. Okay. Okay. And do you want to speak about the tremor? Uh, well, okay. Well, obviously we have this uh, school of thought that Parkinson's and uh, even ALS and a lot of these are brain disorders uh, are a buildup of buildup of metabolites that the, that the brain is not able to clear uh, through the venous system. The CSF drains into the venous system by a pressure gradient. That is, the venous system has to be low pressure for those metabolites to drain 
and clear uh, like the kidneys do, uh, clear through that system uh, so that the metabolites don't build up and cause Parkinson's and ALS and all these other things. Um, again, having an optimized venous system can't be wrong. So, yeah, that, we're obviously going after your tremors. Mm -hmm. yeah. What kind of a doctor could go in there and release the um, carotid and... Uh... Well, we know of an ENT that has been done this for a lot of our people. Um, so an ENT with that disposition, with that demeanor, with that acumen. Mm -hmm. who, who is the ENT that you know? Well, to me, the best in the country is Dr. Hepworth. Hepworth? But, Hepworth, but it's really hard to get in with him. Where is that? Here? Colorado. It's in Colorado. 